Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. First question that came up is feeling energy in the bubbling well in your in your foot. So the bubbling well is the kidney one point, and I'll point to it right here. That's this this point right right here. That uh, uh, where that's our earth chi connection and uh, what if you're not feeling a lot of uh, energy there and bubbling well? Even if you're feeling it in the other parts of your foot, but you're not feeling it in that spot specifically. So, um, so first of all, if you are orienting to your the ball of your foot, not the bubbling well, but the ball of your foot on the big toe line, then that creates a structure that allows for the bubbling well to open. So in the past, I thought, oh, you have to just center over the bubbling well and I'll just get my, you know, I'll get my root that way. And it doesn't work. So um, of course your bubbling well is making contact, but the point of emphasis, the point of contact is the is the ball of the foot. If you do that, then the the Young Chuan, the bubbling well point, kidney one point, will automatically open and allow the, the earth energy connection. If you then orient your body in such a way that you are, are engaging that, as we do in, when we do our three pillars, then the, uh, you're in central equilibrium, then that continues to magnify and you access the big chi, you access the chi of the earth and allows the energy to, to fill you. And um, so as a question of perception, so first of all, if you are doing that and you're feeling the effects of that energetic connection to other parts of your body, that is if you are if you're stand, aligning your structure over the balls of your feet, kind of like, I like to think of it as like standing on the edge of a diving board, you know, when you're on the edge of the diving board, you're ready to dive in, you're not, your weight's not in your heels, it's, you know, you're, you're feeling it more forward, it's more of a dynamic sense there, and, uh, or if you're waiting for a, a serve in tennis, or if you're playing baseball, and you're, you know, you get on the, on the balls of your feet, that's sort of a, you know, a sports 101 kind of, kind of thing. So if you're if you do that, then there is this uh, you get this sense of connection, a sense of, of fullness that comes with that. And so the effects that you may feel in the rest of your body, maybe your hands may feel very very full, very uh, uh, charged up, tingly, more circulation going on. You may feel you know a, a circulation elsewhere in the body, and it's demonstrable. It's something if you get in that position. You know, then you are physically more powerful. You have more effortless power whenever you're in that state. But the perception of energy I, it is a separate topic. And I think it has a lot to do with, and this comes up a lot, and it's something I had to wrestle with too for a long time, is the feeling of yin chi versus yang chi. And you know, it's much easier to, to spot the young chi because it's all sparkly. It's like, you know, it, it vibrates. It, you know, it, it's effervescent. And so consequently, that's what we associate when we think about energy. But yin chi, which is its corollary, it, its complement is different, it's soft, it's watery, it's um, supportive, nourishing. So yang chi is the pressure outward, it's the, the chi of, of running, jumping, skipping, hopping, dancing. And yin chi is more the, uh, the, the feeling like a tree, you know, has its, uh, that sense of 
deep abiding rootedness. And so the yin chi has an entirely different quality to it. And so it's more of a nothing than a something in terms of what we usually associate with energy. You think about energy, you think, ah, oh, okay, you know, there's, there's something there, something crackly, and it wants to go someplace. And whereas yin chi says, no, no, we're just, we're hanging out here. And um, it's really good place to be. And so it abides. So there is a, in terms of perception, it's qualitatively different. So, um, and that is something that you actually learn to develop a perception of it by just sort of hanging out and comparing it to its complement, the young chi. And, you know, you, uh, it helps if you, if you have a partner and you can actually test it and you can actually feel the, the oh, I've got power here, but it feels like I'm doing nothing. And that's because the chi is doing it. Now, it's filling you up so that you don't have to do much. You don't, it doesn't require a lot of yang expression to make something happen. So it's, it's kind of like um, filling up a water balloon. Okay? Like you're filling it up. You got this, it's expanding and it's got this dense quality inside of it that is. Uh, that's filling the balloon, and it's you know when it explodes, it it goes wherever it wants to go. But the uh, it also in that shape, it it fills the form and creates a substantiality to the form. So uh, Peter, you asked that question. How's that? Uh, does that work for you? Do you have any additional questions, thoughts on that? I'm eager to experiment to, you know, put more attention to the ball of the foot and, um, and, and patiently sort of see if I can notice the more subtle yin chi or yeah. not. Cool, good. I remember the Dantian is another spot like that. I remember oh, when yeah. I was first, first exploring this, I, I was talking to a, uh, a Qigong master about that and and I was saying, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for, yeah, I can't feel my Dantian. I, you know, people say, yeah, you got to think you're cheating your Dantian, you got to feel this. And, and uh, I'm not feeling anything there. And he said, you're like someone standing on, on the beach and can't find the ocean. And, you know, which is one of those inscrutable ways of saying like, dude, it's right there, <laughs> you know, and, uh, um, you uh, just have to open your eyes and and see that it's not a beach; it's it's an ocean. So and it, so that's yeah. that's the, the difference. So I have yeah. the same issue, with Dantian. I even wonder if I have a Dantian, you know, because I do all this practice. I don't really feel anything in the Dantian, and and it's uh because it's the same situation. It's okay. yin. It's 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 watery. The Dantian is very watery, and so you want, you know, it, it will be, it'll be qualitatively different than, say, you know, um, like for me, you know, I've been feeling, you know, my upper Dantian, my third eye kind of thing, you know, since I was a teenager, you know, and like, you know, you know, used to get headaches there because it was like, you know, I was, uh, I couldn't understand what was going on, and so to me, that was very, ah, okay, there's pressure on my head there, and and it was uh, it was easy for me to spot that, but I couldn't find my dantian because my lower dantian, because it was more of a nothing than a something. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, it was, and that's one of the things we all have to play with. Each, you know, things open up for us at different times. So Valerie, you had something. Yeah. Um, so now that you're talking about um, the bubbling well. I'm wondering what it is then, because I always assumed that this was the bubbling well. There are times when I'm doing standing or, you know, when we've been doing various practices, meditations in, you know, the Tuesday night class, um, there's an actual feeling of bubbling to the point of where I, I bounce, <laughs> you yeah. know, 
and, and it can be a little bit distracting. So I ask for that to kind of, you know, take the back seat. I don't want to. I don't want to be bouncing up and down the whole time. Sometimes I can't help it, but um, it definitely it feels bubbly. It's bubbly, and I I bounce. And um, as far as feeling the dantian. Ever since I've really been uh, working with the poles in opposition, I feel that swirling in the Dantian. You know, there's like a um, like a whirlpool oh, that's, nice. that's just kind of going around. So that that has really helped me really experience the Dantian more. Right. Right. Excellent. So the bubbling is is still the bubbling well. I'm you know I'm I'm asking. Oh, you're asking. Okay. Um, my first thought that comes to my mind is that uh, there's some inhibition there and in letting it through. So it's like a uh, if you have a you're pouring uh, you know. Something out of a Coke out of a Coke bottle at, at, at the neck and it goes ka chug, ka chug, ka chug, ka chug, ka chug, because there's more pressure uh, compared to the size of the opening. So, um, uh, opening even more would take out the, the bubble part and let more of a ruck, more of a gush. Um, I don't know that I, I could. Um, because I'm, I'm, it's, it's very much happening. Uh, yeah. Um, and it, I'm very full, Right. I, you know, so, but I will, I will try that, you know, I mean, it, my, 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 my first thought is to that it's the level of tolerance of how much you're willing to take in. So you're very full. So that's, so what that your, my, my impression is that energy gate is starting to says, okay, we've got enough for now, thanks. We'll, we'll close it off here. And so it reduces the diaphragm a little bit so that it slows that down. So it's a matter of increasing tolerance of the amount of, of energy that the system can handle, I think would be my engineering uh, approach to that, you know, to that thing. Okay. So we get more, if we can handle more load, then we don't need to cramp it off down at the, uh, at, the at the bubble, you know, at the, at the, at the diaphragm. That's, that's the first, that's the thought I come up with. But uh, it, otherwise it may just be, everything is going along smoothly, so don't mess with it. It's, it'll, it'll work itself out, is I think what more, more uh, what the advice I would give at that point. It sounds like everything's doing just fine, so don't, don't sweat it. <laughs> cool. Okay, so uh, uh, we're good on the uh, bubbling wells and Dantians. Cool. All right, moving on. So last week we talked a bit about the uh, rollback and the energy that animates the rollback, which is Lujin. And compared to say Pongjin, which is a kind of an up and out expansive yang energy, Lu Jin is a down and in yin energy. So they think they're, it, it's coming this way rather than that way. And uh, so a Jin is whenever you express energy through the body. So there's a, a substantial aspect to a Jin and an insubstantial aspect. The physicality that is used to express the jinn is the substantial aspect. The energy is insubstantial by comparison. And then as we go farther more and more insubstantial than the spirit, which, which animates the energy is more insubstantial than, than the energy and that becomes substantial. And as we move toward insubstantiality, that is the direction we're going. So there's, so, but each step of the way, it's not like um, we stop meeting the substantiality. That is our reference point, and that is our, um, that 
provides the structure that allows us to express the, the energy. So even if we're getting to the very, you know, uh, heights of Jedi tricks, we still need that physicality. And with it also the, um, uh, the experience that comes with actually playing with it in a, uh, in a physical way, being able to actually test it out and play with it, depending on how deep you want to go into that. But I believe, and I'm willing to, I'm open to other opinions on this, but my belief is that, that the two are correlated and necessary for each other. They feed each other, the substantial and the insubstantial. And so if you uh, are, have the hope if I just get more, if I just do a deeper meditation, I'll be able to do all these, these cool Jedi tricks. I don't think it's gonna happen. I think it requires actually physically engaging so that you have, um, um, <laughs> excuse me a sec. To silence that call. Yeah, sorry about that. So, so getting the uh, the physicality is as important. So the substantial is as important as the insubstantial. The insubstantial is as important as the substantial. And they feed each other. And so in the, when we're talking about the rollback move, so there are a whole bunch of different ways of doing a rollback in Tegitran. And, um, but what animates all of them is this Lu energy. And, you know, as I mentioned last week, there is, you know, even though it's a yin direction, there's still a yang element to it. That's that, that polar opposition is what creates the energy. It's holding the poles in opposition. So with the, the energy coming in, and I think this is where the mistake for a lot of people is they just, they just say, oh, this is a yin move, so I'm just gonna get very yin, I'm gonna collapse the structure. And that's not at all what we're looking for there. You want to have a yang expression that is, there's a reaching, which establishes the tensegrity of the structure and allows for a system that allows the energy to be expressed. So then you can move in a yin direction, but the, there is a yin and yang component to it, just as there's a substantial and an insubstantial component to it. So have, keeping those, uh, an awareness of those qualities and training those um, is what allows you to do cool stuff. So if you have no interest in doing cool stuff, that's fine too. But the, uh, uh, even if you just want to create a body mind that is the best that it can be at a given moment, as healthy and as fit and um, you know, with a resulting peace of mind, contentment that comes with that, then you still want to do that. You still want to coordinate your, the, the substantial and the instant substantial. We still want, it. it's neither just a mechanical move, nor is it just strictly a meditation, it is both. It is, you know, the, the physicality is, is engaged as well as the, um, uh, the, the insubstantiality, the intention and the, uh, the attention that you bring to it. So the, um, this particular move, as I was mentioning last week, it was like the, I think it's, it's one of the, the, uh, the most woo-woo, has the potential of being the most woo-woo move uh, in, in, in Taiji Chuan, because it, 
it's weird. Whenever you get connect the dots correctly, it's almost like you're doing nothing and cool stuff happens. You just you know you're able to create a big effect, and um, so it it also is such that if you just do it as a as a physical expression, as a mechanical expression, it's not very good. It doesn't do much of anything. It's okay if you're just kind of going through the motions and as a light calisthenic that actually, that, you know, it's kind of nice to do that. But in terms of its actual application, it has very little effectiveness whenever you are doing it strictly as a mechanical move. So the elements that uh, make it work are kind of the same that are in, uh, you know, when I talk about meeting, that there is a, a quality that there that you have to meet what it is that you're, when you're using that gin. It's true of all gins, but I'm going to emphasize this one in particular so that you get the idea here. It, um, let me show you. So, um, you know, ordinarily we think of a rollback as something that looks like, kind of like this, or maybe just something even simpler, just something like that. And uh, we, and that's, you know, on, on a basic mechanical level that, that, that works. But if we want to actually engage the Lugin, there is something that occurs. So just as the element to it, the first thing I do is I actually feel with my hands, fingers, I'm going to use this, this stool as a, as a prop for that. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually engaging this object, okay? If I'm doing it from here, you know, I'm engaging the space that I'm moving in, but I'm engaging the object, feeling it with my hands. So it's not just a, you're moving your arms and and going through this motion like that, right? You're, you're actually feeling with the hands and engaging it. You're contacting and communicating with the object, the person, whatever. And so then you reach with the elbows. This engages the elbow the elbow gate. And so if I'm reaching out and I'm reaching out to my elbows, what I'm doing is now I'm creating integrity in the structure. I'm, ah, I, I've created a fullness there. And so there's actually a gentle pull on the stool, even though I'm not doing much. It's not moving very much at all. But I, I'm creating this kind of thing so that it's like pulling the guitar, guitar string top so they can get a tone out of it. It won't carry the vibrations, the guitar string won't carry the vibrations if it's not of a sufficient tightness. So we want to get it to a, a place where when we're tuning it, we want to get it so that uh, it lines up and oh yeah, there we are. I got I got the I got the E there. So I'm here I am. I'm getting my arms so that they are tuned to the stool. I reach with those elbows. So now, the, I don't have to, I, this is the yang part. This is where I've connected up. I'm reaching out and making contact, establishing that. So now they, well, all I want to do now is to, uh, I can just turn my body and the stool comes with me. I just, so the energy is being carried through my arms because of the tensegrity of the structure. 
the school just wants to come along. So if I'm doing it without a stool, I, I reach out, I feel like I'm grabbing onto the air, grabbing onto the space, reach with my elbows and really get that taut. I pull back the bowstring. This is something you talk about in the classics. You pull back the bowstring and then you release it, right? So you're pulling back the bowstring. So that establishes the tensegrity of the structure. And then oh, you turn and you, this, the arms are a single unit at that point. So they're coming down and boom, you're here and you make that, that connection. So if I'm turning from here, I feel the stool engage my elbows and then I turn and it comes with. So that's the, uh, that's the, the dynamics of what's happening internally there. Any questions on that? Thoughts or questions? Stan. You will have to go off mute, Stan. Yes, I, I get the feeling of, yes, this is what is working. But what's happening to, uh, let's say, if you use it against somebody, what's happening to them? What is... Uh, I don't understand what's happening to them. Uh, what kind of forces are they feeling? Because they're going down. I guess it's uh, like a yin component there. They're going to be going down. But I'm not sure how, and I'm not sure I'm ready to have somebody try it to me. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I, I'm not sure what's happening in them. I'd say at the highest, the most refined levels, the most insubstantial levels, you'll get a similar effect to what we're describing with the bubbling well or the Dantian, where there's more of a nothing than a something. And so it, there is a sense of, of your your your. My experience when, when, when uh, with uh, Waste of Liao was that uh, it was just like the space opened up and I was I was on the floor and it was just like you know boom I, there was there was it was more of a nothing than a something it uh -huh. wasn't like I being thrown down it was like I was just sucked down so that's a similar kind of feeling there to that so what's happening oh and part of the why it's such a disconcerting move. When you do it correctly, is like it's like you're you have a sense of falling into space, and <sighs> it disrupts your balance. At the very least, it it disrupts your balance. It it it's a shock to your energy field to have it have nothing to push against. <sighs> yes. Okay, so that's 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 that feeling there. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. Anybody else? Any other questions, thoughts? All right, let's, uh, oh, Peter. Sorry. Well, quick one. I don't want to uh, uh, hold this up, but what was very intriguing about the, your demonstration with the stool was the suggestion that, you know, um, in, that, in that movement, in the, inner, in the inner movement of rollback with the stool, the, um, that you were participating in the stool in a way that was more than mechanical, more than physical, dare I say, metaphysical, uh, at, or, you know, doesn't matter what you call it, but that you were, that there was a kind of connection with the stool um, that was a, 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 a sort of participation. And, and so the, the, school, the stool coming along with in the rollback was, was not just even though it's a stool and not a person it wasn't only mechanical there was something more than mechanical in in that uh i i, th I think you're right it's you know what we uh you know refer to as the sweet spot in in, in a lot of in, in sports and things like that and when that happens it's like that's when you you know you see the 
the 400 foot home run, the, uh, you know, the, the drive on the golf course that travels forever, the, you know, uh, the 145 mile an hour serve, the things like that. That's where the, those are young expressions. And this is subtler and that's why it's more mysterious is because this is a yin expression. And we're used to things going out whenever we smack them with the sweet spot of, of our you know, weapon of choice. But that coming in, that's, that's unusual. And so consequently, it is disrupting to, particularly to someone who's heavily invested in substantiality, to meet that much insubstantiality is where the you know we see that you know a lot of the the cliches of Tai Chi get uh, 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 you know get expressed. Hmm. Cool. So uh, cool. Anybody else? Well, when when you were showing me this morning, the feeling is uh, one disorientation and one a a, a sinking back, like a, a downward feeling, a feeling of like the downward. Downward. Yeah. Yeah. So it, uh, you know, Bruce, it's, 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 there's a sense of being, of being pulled, I guess, in and down. You know, there's a, there's a sense of, of, of dropping, but that, that's, uh, has a lot to do with the direction that I was, I was using it. So the energy itself can be taken in any direction. It can be, you know, just, <coughs> you can use Lu Jen to just, you know, just, you know, draw someone. And it, it's surprisingly easy, much easier than you think to do that. But what the primary thing it requires is that willingness to meet, that is to engage with your whole being. So the, the, the qualities that I, I talked about regarding meeting are coherence slash wholeness, Coherence just another name for wholeness. So you have to move into a state of wholeness. So you have to meet with your whole being. In order to meet with your whole being, you have to be whole. So that means you must assume a form, a, a wholeness, whatever form that may be, you're assuming a form. You're saying, okay, this is me. This is the thing that I am right now. You're happily invested in that form. And then two, presence. And the presence often arises out of wholeness, but it is actually a separate thing. It's because there is a decision to occupy space and time in presence. And then beyond that, the third thing is to actually engage somebody, some, some other, be it a, a person or a dog or a cat or a tree or a rock or whatever, you're engaging or space itself. You are engaging an other that you say, okay, I've invested in this form. I'm going to extend out, reach out, and then make contact with an other. And when I do that, then I am meeting. And so it's very different than say the pushing away or getting rid of or trying to resist or anything like that. This is like, no, no. Is it, as you're saying, Peter, it's actually, there is a merging that occurs when you do that. There is a sense of connectivity that you can actually generate, you know, something called sticky gin by emphasizing this Lu gin even more. You can actually create like a vacuum, like sucker pods in your hands that, or your arms, and you can actually create this sticky gin and it, it's also disconcerting because it's pulling, it's a very yin uh, uh, tendency there. So there's, uh, so we got those three things. You have wholeness, presence, be here now. So occupy this moment, this space. And then from that, you have the capacity to then extend out and make contact with someone other. And when you do that, you meet. So the, this is, I believe, the root of jinn of all forms is that capacity to do that. 
So let's uh, let's play with this a little bit, shall we? Why don't you stand up? About a little bit, not the back camera, but that's Okay, so let's get our three pillars in. Everything goes better with that. Feeling the balls of the feet. This is gonna open up the bubbling well. You're feeling that your weight is centered over the balls of your feet. Feel your toes, press down a little bit with your toes and really establish contact there. And so the weight is spread throughout the foot, but you want to have it centered on the balls of your feet. Knees are unlocked. You're sinking into the earth. Reach of the crown of the head. Open the jade pillow gate. Up in the chin. Relax your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop. Coccyx. Feel the opposition between the Wei Lu at the coccyx and the Bai Hui. Crowning your head. Feel the space elongating in your neck, your, your back. Feel the space between the vertebrae. Lift from the clavicular notch. Just allow that. Open the chest, open the shoulders. Point your index fingers, yield your fingers. Establish the tensegrity and the energetic coherence throughout your body mind. Reach with your elbows. Your arms are slightly rounded. Your shoulders are relaxed. You're opening the shoulder joint. You feel the chi in your hands. We were talking before about Yang Chi, this is more of a Yang Chi. You're going to feel kind of a hot. to be a lot of uh, energy there, heat energy. Also increased circulation, sort of a, some electrical too. You feel like a tingling, pulsing. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and spiral down to the left. The ball of the right foot, set the right knee and spiral down to the right. We're getting Sun Kwa and back to center, releasing down. At the same time, reaching up with the crown. Bow forward, gather, carry the chi. Feel the weight in your arms. Feel the density of the of the space. Rotate, 
sound. Reach for the elbows. Feel your hands. Press down, elbows down, wrists, hands. Take palms on your elbows. Gather. Yeah. Okay, cool. Using your hands, a feel, using your hands, feel the space in front of you. Reach with those elbows, opening up the shoulder joints. Relax your shoulders. And reaching, feel the fingers, feel the fingernails. Press down on that space without moving. Feel the contact with the space. If you're, you're in a swimming pool, you're pressing down on the water. It's just a different level of substantiality. Space, the air. It's more insubstantial than, than water, but it's still got some, some substantiality to it. So feel into that, feel the elbows, and go to spiral down to the left as you do that. And just as you turn, you're starting to turn, but don't turn. You're just pulling. and feel the activation of everything but the actual motion. Now we're gonna to turn to the right in the same idea here. We're gonna to turn to the right, pull, reaching out with your arms and pulling the turn of your body. And notice you're not, what you're not doing is this. You're not pulling back like that. You are, the body is what's turning and that's what's creating the motion, even though we're not doing any motion here. So now we're gonna make that, we're going to the left this time. Feel your hands, reach with the elbows. Feel that fullness, that, that sense of connectivity. Now we're going to feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, reach with the elbows and spiral down and turn very slowly and softly and just a little bit, just enough so that you're feeling the what if. Oh, if I did pull, what would that, what would that feel like? And go back to center. And go to the right this time, feel your hands, feel your elbows. You'll feel that connection. Feel the ball of your right foot. Set your right knee and spiral down to the right. And slowly, very gently, small turn. Center. Gonna do it a little bit bigger. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee. Feel with your hands, reach with your elbows. And turn a little bit bigger, very slowly.
to the ball of the right foot. Set the right knee, spiral down to the right. Very slowly, very deliberately feel. Feel with your hands, feel with your elbows. The body is what's driving it. The hands are, the arms are reaching out. Spiraling back to center. Down. Move it on your left heel. Step forward with your right foot. Give the ball the right foot. Push your right knee forward. Let the knee spiral down to the left. Up and bring them forward. I'm just going to go out to here. Okay. Feel, feel your hand. Now, feel the left ball. Set the left knee. Spiral down to the right. And you're loading up that left claw. Feel your hands. Feel your elbows. Reach with your elbows. Make that connection. So. As you're turning, and our forearm rotates so that the palms face each other. The ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. You're loading up the right leg and turning back to the front. Reach up, feel your hands, feel, reach with your elbows, left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right, turn to the left, you're feeling, you're pulling with your body, reaching with your arm. More. The ball set the right knee. Turn. Reach. Heel with your hand. With your elbow. Left ball. Set the left knee. Spiral down to the right. And turn. Feel that connection. Rotate. Your hand. Um, then the positive feel in your hands right now. So you'll notice the yang chi of your hands. Now feel into your feet. And notice that there's a different quality to the energy in your feet. Feel into your dantian, your lower, lower abdomen. And notice the quality of energy there. Just take a moment and just appreciate that and notice, feel into your head. Notice that the crown is a different quality of energy there. So we're seeing the energy being expressed differently in different parts of our body. But there is a fullness, a wholeness about it, indicating that there is, you're full all over. It's just perception is different. The quality of the energy is a little different in parts. Take a deep breath. As you exhale, press down and disappear the chi. Let it go. 
Remind yourself to shift to that level of insubstantiality that is even finer than the cheek. Get comfortable at that place. Take a seat. We've got a few minutes. Let's see if anybody has a question. Richard. Um it feels as though uh soon is very essential to yin chi. I'm guessing that it's also essential to yang chi. Can you talk a little about the relationship of sung to these dynamics? Uh, you're ab absolutely right. You know, sung is a yin expression. It's you know that you know the image that you know, I wrote about. You know, the, the traditional one is um, you know a bag of rice, and you you, you cut a you cut a, a slit in the bottom of it and the rice spills out. You know, it's a yin motion. It's it's spilling down, right? And and that's that quality or um, you know, hair hanging down. You know, that so that's soon. So the uh, so it's a very yin expression. And you're right, it does, it is your yang expression is proportional to your capacity to feel your yin. And so even if you can't identify it exactly yet, as you know, that's, that's what we were talking about earlier, it's still, if you create the circumstances, the conditions that allow it to, to grow, eventually you're gonna see some, some flowers in your garden. So you, <laughs> you plant the seeds, you do, you water it, you do other things, yeah, you, know, you wait, and eventually you're going to get some 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 flowers. So uh, you may not see them immediately, and you may not be able to tell them from the weeds when they're growing up. But uh, eventually, it uh, it'll pop up. Scott, you have something? Yeah. So um, so if we're reaching out with our hands and reaching out with our elbows, right? That kind of means the poles in opposition is between is your forearm, kind of right. That's that's that. There's definitely that. So there's definitely that. That's happening, but also elbows and shoulders are poles in opposition, and hands and feet. And so there's it's wherever you place your mind, you can create poles in opposition. So the only thing that that is that determines the poles in opposition is you. That's that's what that's what makes it work. It's your intent to, to make that happen. That's why I, did, I compare it to the mechanical, where this, it looks the same or can look the same mechanically, but it's empty because the E or the, the mind, the wisdom mind, is not doing the necessary work to hold the poles in opposition, which is what generates the chi. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so multiple poles in opposition does not yeah out of the question multiple poles in opposition are necessary for uh high, higher level kung fu and that's why we do things like a tai chi form instead of just standing and, and you know doing standing meditation all day you know even though you can fill up very nicely with standing meditation you are not not creating the variety of experience that allow you to be able to to express the energy in new and interesting ways. So that's uh, so that's that 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 Does that that makes sense. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Good. Lynn, you had some. Yeah, I don't know if it's poles in opposition um, <laughs> or exactly. It, it seemed like it was the yang and the yin in close proximity because. When I was turning, right, I had the the nothing below, you know, just this wonderful feeling of of 
of, of a, an opportunity of emptiness. And then, um, but, but the fingers were super energized and kind of pulling the air along with them, right? It, it was, yeah, okay. <laughs> Yummy. It felt great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Waiter, whatever she's having. Go, <laughs> uh, anybody else? Oh, good. Okay. Good. Yeah. So that's the uh, that's the game. So this is this is something. It doesn't require a big setup. You know, you can do this in the shower. Yeah. It's like anytime you like. You know. You can just stick a hand out there, just er, just feel into that. And so this is the illusion. It's just pulling in and down, but you can also reverse that and go up and out, and we can create some pong jin there. And so it's a, uh, so these are the two simplest forms of energy expression of jin, right? Up and out, yang, down and in, yin. You know, so there's that. So we get those those two going together, and then you get the, uh, you know, you you have a party. So then from there you get you know you get the ten thousand things. So it's a <laughs> big fun. Cool. Peter. I am enjoying how to lift and move my limbs, and shit, it's almost like a year now, but I'm still learning. But oh my god. The difference from not like wrecking your joints and just learning how to like use things. Valerie like drills me forever on this. You're looking yeah. very grateful there, Keith. Keep, keep it's, it start, it's, it's starting to take there, Ricky Dog. Hey, Good. look for me in the bull shop ballet. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Peter. Yeah. Question. You know, a, a simple practice I do often is uh, in the bow stance, push and withdraw, just push and withdraw. Is that a good way to exercise the, the complementarity of energy? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it, 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 will, it will never, it will be different than you've ever done it before when you add this to it. Okay, great. Thank you. It'll, it'll, it'll crank, crank it up to 11. Yeah. Okay, anybody else? All right. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Maria. Thanks, Maria. Bye-bye. Love you guys. Bye. 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 Thank you.